Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Diana um, from Anxinia Street, and today we are making Kolokita Keftedes using these zucchinis. Now, what in the world are Kolokita Keftedes? If you've never heard of them before, these are the Greek zucchini fritters. They have feta cheese in them, they are herby. I actually use things like basil and mint and dill and parsley and fresh oregano, um, and they are just wonderful and delicious and very refreshing. So let's get started. We're going to start by grating our zucchini. Okay, you're going to do this, just like this. Okay. And once we've fully grated both zucchinis, what you're gonna do is salt them and then let them drain for about 10 minutes or so in the bowl in a strainer, okay? You see that? Perfect. It has been about 10 minutes. I want to show you how much water still comes out. Keep squeezing. Do you hear that? You have no idea how much water is in a zucchini. How funny, right? So FYI, we're going to do a little special twist on this recipe, right? And we're actually making them keto. So we're not using regular flour. We are gonna be using almond flour and a little bit of psyllium husk to mimic the way regular standard wheat flour works. So that means they're going to be keto friendly. They're also going to be gluten free. So if you're a celiac, this is actually the perfect recipe for you. So look at that, it keeps draining out more water. So here's a little secret. I made this recipe on Sunday for Greek Easter. We were going to my friend's Easter celebration and she was having a bunch of people there, family, friends, and long story short, I made these with this exact same recipe, keto friendly, gluten free, and I baked them so they weren't even fried. And everybody went gaga over them. Nobody knew the difference until someone asked what was in them and I said I made them the healthy way. Isn't that fun? <laughs> All right, well, let me finish draining these and then we can start assembling everything together. Okay, so we're back. So in here, I've got the two zucchinis that are fully strained and uh, you know drained out as, all, as much liquid as I possibly can get out of them. And now I've got my herbs chopped up. So what I have in this little bowl, I had a combination of dill, shallots, spring onions, um, parsley, basil, and fresh oregano, and mint. So they're going to be very fresh. I love that kind of freshness with that you can achieve with these quadrupedic uh, fetus. So just dumping them in there, okay? And the next thing I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of salt in here. You kind of salt and pepper to taste. I kind of just eyeball it. Crack some pepper. I don't add garlic to this. I know we tend to like to add garlic to things, not to this recipe specifically. Um, I think it takes away from it. And the onions and the spring onions have two different type of flavors, okay? So I'm just gonna mix this up, get this a good stir, see that? All right, make sure everything's evenly distributed. Course, the next thing we're adding is feta cheese. I've got a nice piece in here. I'm gonna go with, I already drained out the brine because that's just my last piece in here. And just gonna break it up with my hands, just like this. See that? We love feta cheese. So this, so Greek feta cheese, real Greek feta cheese is usually made with up um, three parts sheep's milk and one part goat's milk. That is the PDO recognized version. Now, in different parts of Greece, you're actually going to find a few different versions of this. In Kefalonia, where I'm from, they have a slightly different version of that. Um, where my husband's from, in Trikala, there'll be a slightly different version of that. The truth is that there are many varieties of feta that are in Greece. Um, you just choose the one you love the most. 
All right, gonna add a little drizzle of olive oil to this. All right. I'm gonna start mixing it back up again, evenly distribute everything. Okay. And then I wanna crack some eggs into this. I'm gonna do three. Now you can beat them first if you want to. You don't really have to. Egg is really your binder. So I'm just gonna, okay, there you go. I'm gonna mix it all up. There you are. Okay. And now to this, I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon zest. I love the freshness of lemon zest. Not nice. Just the aroma, I could, I swear I can. I wish you could smell it all for, through the camera. <laughs> I did the zest of the whole lemon. Perfect. And I'm also going to use the juice. You do half a lemon. This is kind of like to taste. You want to make sure you catch any pits. Nobody wants to find any pits. And they're going to look like a this. I'll do the whole lemon because this is a lot of zucchini. Just adds brightness to it. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Give that a good stir. Okay. And now, almond flour. Psyllium husk. Psyllium husk is important because almond flour does not have gluten in it, obviously. Uh, the same way that wheat flour naturally has gluten, that binding protein. And so the psyllium husk will actually absorb some of the excess liquid and hold it together. And the last thing I'm going to add is some baking powder. I should have added a tablespoon of that. Oh, here's my measuring I'll do a tablespoon. I have a mixing, you know, a wooden spoon here, but I'm really just using a fork. Old school. You can tell my grandmother taught me how to cook. <laughs> She's so cute. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it alone for a few minutes. I want the psyllium husk and the um, and the almond flour to completely absorb all the excess liquids, so that I can easily spoon my batter onto my cookie sheet, which is going to cook and um, bake my zucchini fritters instead of frying them. Okay, so now as you can see, I have spooned the zucchini fritter batter onto the cookie sheet that's parchment lined. I've drizzled just a little bit of olive oil right on top and they are ready to bake in the oven at 425. You're gonna leave them in there for about 12 minutes on one side, flip them, and then about another 12 minutes on the other side. All right, we'll see them when they're all baked. Okay, so now we are ready to go. I got my batter, this is what it looks like, mix. I've actually turned on the oven to 425 um, so that I can bake them. Now, I'm just gonna spoon them on here, just press them down. So they're a little semi, a little flat, you know, looking pretty. the exact same size doesn't really matter okay. 
You can also use a, um, like a small ice cream scoop type of cookie dough scoop, whatever those are called. That also does the job and just kind of flatten them on top. Okay, while I do the rest of these, I will come back to you guys when I am all done. Okay, so now as you can see, I have spooned the zucchini fritter batter onto the cookie sheet that's parchment lined. I've drizzled just a little bit of olive oil right on top and they are ready to bake in the oven at 425. You're gonna leave them in there for about 12 minutes on one side, flip them, and then about another 12 minutes on the other side. All right, we'll see them when they're all baked. Well, here they are all done. Just took out the last batch from the oven. Look at them, aren't they gorgeous? So delicious. I swear you can't even tell that they're not fried. I know we traditionally fry them. So kidney fritters all over the world are fried, but these are baked and they are wonderful. Let us taste one. Mm. You cannot go wrong. Please try this. Let me know in the comments if you have. We normally will serve this with tzatziki. I'll make another video showing you how to make tzatziki the traditional way the way my grandparents did it and taught me please let me know if you make this subscribe and share thank you have a great day